And welcome to the CBT Micro Nuggets, where I'm going to show you how to set up a Minecraft server. I'm Sean Powers, and if you're not familiar with Minecraft, a really cool way to get familiar is to set up your own server and play along at home. <laughs> We're going to talk about how to set up a server process on your own computer. And the neat thing about Minecraft is it's a Java-based server system. So whether you're running Windows or Linux or OS X, you can set it up because it uses the magic of Java, which is cross-platform. Platform. Now today I'm going to show you how to set up a Windows server, but the process is similar, sort of, for Linux and OS X. You just have to make sure that you have the most recent version of Java. But let's get right to it. We're going to go to our Windows box and I'll show you how to install a Minecraft server. Now the first thing you're going to do is open up your web browser and you're going to head on over to www.minecraft.net. So we'll go to the Minecraft website and go play Minecraft. We're going to go to the download page. And here you'll see this is where you download the program, but if you want to set up a multiplayer server, you come down here. Now we're actually going to use the simplest method for this micro nugget, so go ahead and grab this Minecraft server.exe file. So we're going to download this and we'll save it. All right, so let's close this window. Now I've created in my C drive a folder called Minecraft because I'm not terribly. <laughs> <laughs> um, creative, no, nonetheless. So in this C drive, Minecraft, this Minecraft server application is here. Now we're going to double click. It's going to fail. Um, oh, first uncheck this so it always, so it'll run. And it says, hey, this requires a Java runtime environment, which I have not installed on this computer yet. So click OK, and it will conveniently take you to the Java website for downloading the most recent version of Java. So we're going to do that. Click free Java download. Uh, agree, download. Save this again to the desktop. It's downloaded, so we can close our browser window. Now double click on this and install Java. It's um, just like installing another software application, so I'm going to fast forward through this entire process. Now the only thing I'm going to let you or point out here is that you probably don't want this Ask toolbar installed on your Internet Explorer box. It's kind of sneaky of them. Just uncheck that unless you really do want that one more toolbar on your on your browser but then we're gonna go through the rest of the process all right Java is all installed so we'll close this and now we can start up the Minecraft server from this folder again just double click on it and the first time it's gonna go through and it's gonna say a bunch of things like failed to load and failed to load and first of all you want to make sure that you allow this to get through the firewall if you want other computers to connect so just click allow access Anyway, so it said all these things file not found, but that's actually not a problem. The very first time you run it, it's going to create all the files right in this folder for you. So my suggestion is start it up the first time, then in this command window, type stop. It's going to gracefully shut down the server, and then you have all these files created. You can edit them, things like this server.properties file. Now you want to open this with just notepad, so plain old notepad. Say OK. And this is where you can set things like the message of the day and uh, what server IP you have. All the different settings for your server are going to be right inside this server.properties file. So set those to however you want them to be for your Minecraft server. And then every time you double click on this, it'll start. You can right click and drag and create a shortcut. So you can just double click on it and it'll start and it's running. Minimize it and do your stuff. Or you can do one more tweak that I'm going to show you. If we have time, I'm going to go super fast. Minecraft server by default only uses 100 megabit megabytes of RAM. And that's just not very much if you have, well, it's just not very much. So here's a trick that we're going to show. We're going to use a shortcut. Go into Program Files, Java, JRE7, Bin... You may have to rewind and follow along again. And we're looking for the Java W file. So right click on this, drag it to the desktop. Make sure you're using the right mouse button because we're not going to actually move it. We're going to select create a shortcut. All right. So then you open up the properties of this file. And we're going to change two things in here. You'll see here the target is the entire path to that Java W file, which is why I just went and found it instead of typing it out because it's pretty long. So once that's there, at the end you're going to type the commands that you want Java to run. In our case, that's going to be dash xmx1024m. 
I'll explain these in a minute. Dash X M S one zero two four M dash jar and then Minecraft underscore server dot exe in quotations. And then down here in the start in, we're going to change this to Minecraft, that folder that I made. So what have we done here? This string is what you add to the end after the quotation marks. And XMX 1024M and then XMS 1024M. That allows it to use a gigabyte of memory instead of just that 100 megabytes by default. Dash jar is telling Java that this exe file is indeed a jar file, a, a Java application file. So it tells it that. And then the start in tells it we want all this to happen in the C colon Minecraft folder. So we do that, click apply, click OK. And now when we do this, it'll start up Minecraft, but instead of using just 100 megabytes of RAM, it's going to have the ability to use up to a gigabyte, which will give you better performance and more players can join. So that's all there is to it. It's starting, preparing the thing. If we looked in our server.properties file, you'll see what port it's running on. So if you're running outside of your network, you need to forward that port in. But that's all it is to get your own Minecraft server up and running. These are all the different configuration things that that you can set up if you want to ban players or you want to give players ops. I assume that you're familiar with Minecraft if you want to set up your own server. So that's all there is. I hope that this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.